speaker is in person. I think um, you can come here. So our second talk is defending substitution-based profile pollution attacks on sequential recommendation. Um, and the speaker, or you'll present yourself. The green is forward. Okay. The red is uh, down. Okay. Hope uh, you all can hear me well. So uh, my name is Chen Ray, and I'm a PhD student at uh, UIUC. I'm going to present the paper defending substitution-based profile pollution attacks on sequential recommenders. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So first, I will um, talk a bit uh, about the background of sequential recommender. So sequential recommender are a um, specific type of recommenders that take sequential input and output a um, list of recommended items. And uh, in our case, sequential input can be user history, interactions, and et cetera. And the sequential recommender would output prob probability distribution or a list of uh, recommended item as items as output. And examples of such sequential recommenders can be GRU for rec, um, SAS rec, locker, and et cetera. So uh, I'll talk about a few relevant work uh, in adversarial, att adversarial attacks on uh, recommender systems. So the majority of the works on adversarial attacks on sequential recommender focus on data poisoning attacks. So um, for data poisoning attacks, um, the attacker would craft fake profiles and inject these profiles into the training data. So upon the retraining, the model will be biased and towards uh, recommending more, uh, for example, target items instead of the original recommended items. So this is the first kind of adversarial attacks. The second kind of adversarial attacks is called profile pollution. So profile pollution does not require retraining. So it modifies the test time data and the older existing user profiles, for example, the interactions, clicks, and et cetera. And in this way, uh, the model can be manipulated into recommended items that uh, the attacker want, the attacker want. For example, some target items a seller would, would really like to promote. And uh, exactly, so that's the second kind of uh, adversarial attacks. Now we'll talk about, uh, first we'll talk about our attack objective and then we'll talk about uh, the defense methods we propose in this paper. And okay, let's start with the uh, attack objective. So in this paper, we have performed both targeted attack and untargeted attack. So for targeted attack, our objective is to increase the target item exposure. That, that basically means increase the um, recall rate or hit rate or um, NDCG of our target item groups. And the second objective is untargeted uh, attacks. So in this type of attacks, we, we simply want to reduce the recommendation um, quality to reduce the um, user satisfactory, so to speak. So for the attacker, we have assumed access to the data and we have assumed white box attacks in our threat model. So for black box attacks, you can uh, refer to our previous work on uh, model extraction, where we can successfully extract models via uh, without training data. So uh, by uh, performing the attack, we also constrain the attack uh, by the number of substitution we made in the user interactions and on the item similarity between the original items and the adversarial items, such that the attack would not be easily detected by um, anomaly detection algorithm, so to speak. So um, let's get into our attack algorithm. So the attack algorithm is relatively simple. We can categorize the whole algorithm in three steps. So the first step is to forward and compute the adversarial gradients with respect to the input embeddings. So in this step, you will input the clean, uh, the clean sequences and compute an adversarial loss with respect to the target items. And then you trace the gradients backward to the item, uh, to, to the embedding space. Now, with the embedding space, we are able to select vulnerable items via important scores. In our implementation, we have simply used the norm of the gradients, of, of the perturbed gradients, and then compute uh, the most vulnerable items in the sequences. And in the last step, we use these perturbed embeddings and we project these perturbations into the item space with cosine similarity. And of course, in this step, we will constrain the number of vulnerable items we select and we enforce similarity between the adversarial items and the original items. Now, we'll talk about second part of our paper is uh, our defense objective. So the defense objective, put simply, is to enhance the model robustness to resist against perturbations. So for targeted attacks, we would like to avoid changes of target item exposure. And for untargeted attacks, of course, we want the performance of our sequential recommenders to stay stable and not having, uh, re and reduce the performance variation, so to speak. 
And of course, uh, for training purposes, we assume full access to data, uh, the model weights, and the um, optimization process. And uh, we have proposed two methods in our paper. The first is called Dirichlet neighborhood uh, sampling, sorry. And the second one is called FSL training. So uh, we first talk about the first method. For the defense, it's called Dirichlet neighborhood sampling. And um, this is somewhat similar to randomized smoothing methods. We, comp we compute a, we construct a neighborhood graph via cosine similarity between all item pairs. So for each item, you will have a list of one hop neighbors. And the next step, we will extend the neighborhoods to second hop, uh, to two hop neighbors. So for each of the item, you will have a local neighborhood that consists of one hop neighbors and two hop neighbors. And then we will initialize a Dirichlet distribution and we sample an eta from the Dirichlet distribution. So the eta is uh, basically a list of scalar values that will sum up to one and then they are non-zero, such that when we compute the augmented item embeddings, we simply compute uh, the weighted sum of all the item embeddings in the local convex, which is constructed by the one-hop neighbors and the two-hop neighbors. So the intuition of this method is basically we are trying to uh, create augmentations in the local item space and the model, when in training, the model would learn to resist against local perturbations. So we will randomly augment input items in training and uh, we will perform uh, this sampling during our training, which is very efficient. So this is our first method. Okay. The second method we uh, do is adversarial training. Adversarial training, in this case, we're actually finding the worst case augmentation instead of just creating local perturbations during training. So um, similar to the previous step, we initialize a eta. But in this case, we are representing the item with one hot encodings in eta. So the eta can be very large, right? So in the next step, we will compute the adversarial loss, and then we are actually performing gradient ascent with respect to the eta. So that eta is basically the worst case combination of all the item embeddings for this specific item in the user sequence. So we will clip and rescale eta so that the eta is non-zero and then they sum up to one, such that it guarantees that um, the augmented item embeddings is actually a linear combination of all possible item embeddings in the item space. And of course, in the last step, we'll compute the augmented item embeddings, just as we did uh, in the previous Dirichlet uh, sampling um, strategy. And of course, we'll incorporate such adversarial examples in training, and we hope that with these adversarial examples, the model will learn to combat the worst case augmentation um, in test time. So that's our second method. Now, we will compare the two methods of Dirichlet sampling and adversarial training. So Dirichlet neighborhood sampling, it samples augmented items features, but locally in the local neighborhood we construct it. And therefore, it requires uh, to construct a neighborhood. Um, in our case, we use cosine similarity to construct such neighborhoods. Uh, and of course, during training, sampling will be much more efficient than computing the worst case augmentation via adversarial training. And for adversarial training, Although it uh, computes the worst case uh, scenario, worst case augmentation in training, it requires much more computational resources. This is because we have to perform the um, gradient ascent with respect to the EDA. And of course, we have a um, larger input space because we are representing the items with one hot encodings. So um, that's the disadvantage of adversarial training. So we will talk about our experiment setting now. Uh, we have used a lot of data sets, Beauty, MovieLens 1M, 20M, and the last FM and Steam. We have adopted uh, state-of-the-art sequential recommenders such as NARM, SASREC, BirdForRec, and Locker. And we will evaluate our performance with NDCG at 10, Recall at 10, and of course their changes with um, Delta. And in our profile pollution attacks, we have made the following constraints. So the minimum item similarity between the original items and the adversarial items will be 0.5. This is also used for constructing local neighborhoods in Dirichlet distribution. And for maximum substitutions, we, we select two for ML1M, and we only change one item for user profiles for all other data sets. So we'll first talk about uh, the attack performance uh, via substitution-based profile pollution. And this is our table, and we have used NARM as an example of our results. So the first three rows, you see there is a U there, which denotes the untargeted attack. And for the last three rows, which is a T there, that denotes the targeted attack. So in untargeted attacks, which are the first three rows um, of the results there, we can observe that the performance are actually reduced. This is because for untargeted attack, we hope that the model performance would reduce, right? 
such, uh, this is also called demotion attack in this case. And for targeted attacks, we, we have observed that our algorithm can actually significantly increase the model um, exposure in both NDCG at 10 and recall at 10 across all data sets. And of course, the best results are uh, marked bold in these cases. So these results actually indicate that our at attack uh, algorithm can propose theories threats for sequential recommenders. So this is our first part of the experiments. The next part of our experiments is how do the defense methods perform? And this is very similar. We have a similar table and the same uh, model architectures here. So in this case, we are um, evaluating the results with the delta of the NVCG10 and R at 10. So the performance would be better when they are when the variations are closer to zero, such that that demonstrate that the model is actually robust against perturbations. So in this case, we have observed both adversarial training and Dirichlet distribution can reduce the performance changes. And in both of the scenarios, we also see that adversarial training is more effective than the Dirichlet distribution. And this demonstrates that the worst case augmentation is, in most of the cases, um, a better defense strategy um, than Dirichlet distribution. So our methods demonstrate effectiveness against uh, profile pollution attacks. We'll also uh, talk about the popularity of the items and their relation to the t attack and defense results. So uh, we have uh, listed a similar table here, which is before attack and after attack. And in short, uh, what we have observed in these experiments is in targeted attacks, popular items are more easier to attack and harder to defend. And that means if you want to make uh, popular items more popular, it's very easy. But if you want to defend such items, it's actually much more difficult than the regular items in these data sets. And lastly, we'll talk about how model architectures affect robustness. So these four charts are actually the performance variations with respect to each of uh, the models. So in untargeted, uh, in targeted attacks, we, dem uh, we actually observed that Locker demonstrate the smallest performance changes. And on the contrary, we observed that NARM shows the highest vulnerability against both targeted attacks and untargeted, uh, untargeted attacks. This suggests that transformer-based models can have uh, improved uh, robustness. All right, here are a few takeaways. So first, sequential recommender systems are can be threatened by substitution-based attacks, and by altering just one or two of the user interactions, we can successfully perform uh, both targeted and untargeted attacks. And of course, our defense methods demonstrate robustness against profile pollution attacks, while different uh, popularity and different model architectures may have different properties uh, with respect to the robustness. So um, that's my presentation. Thank you. Uh, I'll take any questions now. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to encourage the people um, that are present to go to the mics and ask questions. Um, in the meanwhile, we have some questions online. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this is a question that I see here a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, people are asking about um, what are likely scenarios where people would attack a recommender system. Mm -hmm. And also, I see you're smiling, so you might have okay. expected that question. Exactly. And also, mm -hmm. um, how would the attacker have access to the training data? OK. Uh, so uh, in, in, this is a great question, of course. So uh, in our uh, scenario, which is, of course, to be honest, this is uh, unlikely in, in the real world scenarios. But we have assumed uh, such a scenario, for example, when the attacker have access uh, to the user client via backdoor or via malware. So the interactions can be um, can be altered or can be modified by the attacker. So this this is uh, this is possible by the attack, although very unlikely in reality. And as for the training data, uh, as I mentioned before in our previous work, we have demonstrated that uh, even white box models can be accessed uh, via data-free model extraction. So in our previous work, we have demonstrated that these attacks, white box attacks, is actually very possible by model extraction, where you can uh, extract a very similar model uh, comparable to the white box model, and then you can compute the adversary examples just like what we did in our uh, in